So, are you ready? Mm-hmm. So, welcome to the Four Your Thoughts podcast, where psychology, pop culture, and self meet. I am here with Ariel Simone. Is that how you say it? Ariel, right? No, it's Ariel. Ariel. Ariel yeah. Simone. I'm like, what's up? Um, I feel like you give like big homegirl energy for real, for real. I just tapped mm-hmm. into your YouTube uh, a couple of days ago, but I've been following you on Twitter. Um, she's a holistic mommy, um, a holistic nutritionist, fitness trainer, and wellness writer. And her thing is teaching people how to eat for energy. And I was super attracted to your Twitter first um, because I have like a mad ADD and I used to have to take like medication for it, but it just doesn't make me feel good. So me and my mom are really big on like supplements and like natural things just for like cognitive function and um, just to, like feel good and just like, you know, be your best self and whatnot. So I think I saw you, I always see, like I saw you retweet on my timeline with just like different things, whether it's for seasonal depression or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, wow, she's super dope. Um, I just screenshot everything. My whole like photo album is screenshots of your tweets and stuff like that. So welcome to the podcast. Hey girl. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so yes. excited. I'm excited. Um, yeah. so, mm-hmm. so like this is our first time actually speaking face to face. Um, so tell me about your story and like who you are outside of what, you know, we may know as people who just follow you on Twitter or Instagram. Oh, so um, I am from Brooklyn. And <laughs> is that <a> from? <laughs> yeah. And um, I was originally a model. So I was a model for like three years. Um, and I got really, really sick while in Paris modeling. And I was just super, super malnourished, super um, unhealthy. I was dehydrated. And I just wasn't in a great space mentally, physically, emotionally. And spiritually, I just wasn't well. So I got really sick and I started to learn a lot about physiology and the body composition and just what type of things feed the body. And then I got um, my personal training, my personal training certificate. And then after that, I started getting different specialties and like advanced training. So I work with like corrective exercises, like just making sure people's posture is correct. Um, and then after I started doing that and I became a personal trainer for four years, I was like, you can go to the gym every day if you don't eat well and you don't take care of your mind and you don't treat your gut with care it's almost like nothing happened. You won't see a difference. I noticed when I started talking about nutrition with my clients, they started to see results a lot quicker than my clients who weren't really eating well. So I, that's when I connected the two, like, oh, okay, nutrition is super important. Abs are really made in the kitchen. So let me research that a little bit more. I started reading so so many nutrition books. Like I just started going crazy. I got them all over there in that little corner. Yeah. Um, but yes, and then I got, um, licensed in holistic nutrition and that was very powerful for me because I, I just wanted to find a way to connect mind, body, soul, and understand who we are as emotional eaters. And that's where I'm at now. So pretty much I went from modeling to personal trainer. Oh, I also taught Zumba for a year, but that was just me being in my excitement. It's so fun. Yeah, I love Zumba. Zumba. I don't know if you see, but I'm always dancing all over social yeah, media. Yeah. And I, I just talk a lot about like movement, just like you know, like having that childlike, playful, like essence to yourself, really absolutely. like change your life. For sure. Absolutely. I just feel like it's it's important for us to be very intentional, and that can look different for everyone. But regardless, it's important for us to be intentional with how we think how we move, how we eat, how we talk, Mm -hmm. how we feel, and just tapping into like what's really going on with our temple. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Um, I feel like I've started to be super, I've always been an intentional person, but truly like hone in on it. Maybe when I moved here, honestly, because I was like away from my family and like my normal friends and things like that. And I was kind of forced to like be in solitude and really think about like who I am, what I want to do, who I want to be. So tell Mm -hmm. me more about like, I guess when you say you were model and you weren't eating right and how you felt, like how would you describe that to someone who might not know if they are, you know, like on the right track as far as like mind, body, soul goes? Like describe it to like, yeah. you describe it to like, you know, a homegrown. I love that question. 
Yeah. Yeah. I really love that question because I, when I was modeling, I was barely eating. I was eating like a cucumber on purpose. purpose. It was intentional. Oh, like me. You really got to be the smallest. You have to be way smaller. Yeah. Because right now I'm 140 pounds. I really want to be 150. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) but I was a hundred. At the time, I was 130 pounds, and they really, really wanted me to be like 118. So it was excessive, and I'm really tall, so it was it was really, really bad. But um, I was barely eating. I was working out two times a day, sometimes three if I was in a mood. I did not. I had a disconnected relationship with myself and my body and food. I just didn't understand it. I was just like, oh, like I just need to eat this much and then I'll weigh this much. Oh, I need to work for burn this much in order for me to look like this. And then every time I looked in the mirror, I didn't see someone beautiful. I didn't see someone fulfilling. And that's because I wasn't doing something fulfilling. And even when I got down to why I was even modeling, it was all very scattered. It was all very superficial, very surface level. And it required me to go through a lot to determine like, is this who I am? Am I a walking man again? Am I somebody who doesn't get to speak, you know, and it just, it didn't sit right with me. So before modeling kind of pushed over to this whole body positivity conscious mm-hmm. this so is before hard. instagram mm-hmm. this is before you. instagram too so this is like 2013 ish yeah. this yeah. is when instagram was still about food mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah those days. yes it okay. was then so um i feel like i was in a space where i just was very disconnected with myself and my body and my goals and my purpose Mm -hmm. and when you are disconnected with your purpose it's easy for you to feel scattered and lost and i just lost a lot of my my personal life like i've always been this bright vibrant person but when it came down to modeling i was always just feeling like not confident and not sure and it just wasn't good i was not moving in alignment with what i was supposed to be doing at all it was terrible so i would recommend if you are in that space where you just kind of don't know what's what and who's who just tapping back into things that feel good um, because I wasn't doing anything that felt good, you know, even working out two or three times didn't feel good. Just eating cucumbers and apples didn't feel good. None of it felt good. And then I can't wonder why shit didn't fall in alignment with me because I wasn't moving in alignment. Yeah. So how can things, know, right? How would you get your abundance if you're not walking in the way you're supposed to walk? You're not, you're going not, even, right you're not <laughs> even abundant, sis. <laughs> um, so. That reminds me a lot about like my, a little bit about my story too. It's like, um, sorry. It's like, um, I guess people think that when you're like doing a job that people deem is kind of like, you know, glamorous or like successful, or if you're w- hanging out with this group or that group, they just assume that you are like, you know, feeling good, living good, doing all of that. But like you really, sometimes people really, really aren't. It's because you aren't in alignment with who you truly are. All those things might look good on the outside. Like they don't always feel good and you can get lost, um, in a sense of like, from people's like val- other people's valid- validation like like so you think that that's where you should go but it's really not you know and you right. were like damn I'm doing all this stuff I'm getting all this praise but like why don't I feel good on the inside right right exactly. so, so that reminds me a lot of my story and I feel like also people are scared to like it takes a while to heal and then to, you know get on the other side which is like the, the tricky part of whatever but once you do that it's like you can be that popping ass girl for who you truly are mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying Right. It's important to check in with what's going on. Like, do you even like what you're doing? Exactly. Do you like who you are? You know, I feel like if there's anything quarantine really taught us is who are you when you don't got shit to do? I guess. You know, who are you? Who are you? Are you somebody that gets up and cleans for no reason? Are you somebody that's like lazy? Are you complacent? Like, just who are you and who who do you want to be? after you figure that out so that's that's the bag that I'm in now but it took me not being in my bag into my bag (laughs) that's what people don't understand it's gonna take you like if you feel like you're in the like the gutter right now like the best is on the other side but you have to do the work and that work is not easy and it's like continuous I don't think people Mm -hmm. know that so speak more on I'm curious about because you mentioned this also in your YouTube video it's like who do you want to be? And you have to show up as her. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally. Like, and it's like, even if you might self-doubt yourself, whatever the case may be, like, 
nobody can really tell the difference. <laughs> like, I, I'm not sure if people like understand that. Like, everyone's out here, like, just trying to make it in a certain sense, in whatever way, like, you know, in whatever defect that they have, they're just trying to make it through. So speak more to showing up, showing up as that, especially when it comes to um, emotional eating. Me personally, I've, I'm really tiny. So like, I've never really had like a diet thing or anything like that. Um, more so like, I think about like working out as a way to feel good and stuff like that. But you can speak to people who are trying to lose weight or people who are trying to do all of that or just even be your best self. Like, how do you walk as such? And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it looks like, so I'm a big believer in holistic wellness. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I, it's hard for you, huh? I said holistic mommy. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> hence, hence the name. So <laughs> it's hard for you to eat well if the mind isn't well. It's hard for your mind to be well if you don't eat well. It's hard for you to operate throughout life if you have a job you don't like, you're in a relationship you don't like, you don't, ha you have a poor relationship with your mind, with money, like with sleep with water, like all of those things really, really matter. So I think that when it comes down to us imagining our healthiest self, imagining our best self and manifesting that person, it looks like getting really, really, really specific with what that person looks like. And I mean specific, like I like to think about, um, I, and I'm, I swear I'm not even being dramatic. I really feel like I manifested my apartment and I feel like I- I do too. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I manifested my okay, about that. Yeah. I feel like I manifested the money that I have now, like being able to like pay for school for myself. Like I feel like I manifested that. I feel like I manifested my partner too, because when I met him four years ago, I was like, I just want a guy that's gonna like really, really inspire me and push me and like motivate me, a guy that's doing his own thing. And then I, it just happened. So I do I, I but so back to being specific about manifestation, right? Um, Write our stuff down too. So if we lose our thought, we can go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I, I could go in about all the things I manifested because shit is creepy. And it's, a little creepy. Podcast. it's perfect for podcasting. If, if you don't have a podcast already, I suggest you start one. You're, you're amazing already. But Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It's so hard. We could talk um off air about that, but it's it's, it's a podcast is not easy. That's why yeah, I'm okay. here. Mm -hmm. I commend you for this. I think it's amazing. Penny for your thoughts is just perfect. So just thank you. Um, yeah, so being specific about it, I like to think about what that person does because our daily habits it shapes our life, it shapes our everyday experiences, and it, it will what we do every day today for this whole entire month sets up the next month and that month sets up the next season so that's just like just getting down and specific with the daily habits the person that you want to be what is their mornings like how the fuck how do they start the day yeah like how do they start the day and how do they end the day so having a morning and a nighttime routine that feels like self-care that feels like self-love it looks like not being on your phone for at least an hour mm -hmm at least an hour like it is so easy to wake up and just be on our phone and our phones not to say that they're unhealthy but they are severe distractions it's just too many thoughts and too many opinions and too many experiences that we're digesting before we even realize how we feel what we I think like exactly. what do I think that's what I'm saying like what do I think about what just happened like who am I? What are my attentions for today? I don't, I don't even know my attentions. I don't even know what I'm eating for lunch, but I know that this girl just did this with this nigga. Like, you know, it's just, it's too much for me. And I just, I highly recommend less phone time, less distractions, tuning in with yourself and setting intentions for the day. The second you wake up, it's like, this is what I'm getting done. This is who I am. I recommend a morning routine that involves mind. So taking care of things for your mind. Are you meditating? Are you reading? Are you trying to learn something new? Are you just, be, just take a moment and be in silence for a second as well. Uh, and then I recommend doing something for the body. You know, just get up and stretch. Get up and do a quick little workout, 10 squats real quick, 10 crunches before you hop in the shower, before you get ready for your day. Add in some movement, do a 30 minute yoga routine. I love Ariana Elizabeth on yo on YouTube. Okay, I need to follow her. She's amazing. She has the best YouTube yoga videos ever. 
Um, it's so affirming. It's so soft and sensual. It's perfect. It's the perfect way to start your day. And um, so I would add in mind, body, and doing something kind to your spirit. For me, I really like to do either meditation or journaling. Every single day I journal and I write down 10 things I'm grateful for that happened to me the day before. I'm always just like, oh, because it, it just reminds me that I, I did get things done. There's a lot to be grateful for. The cup is always half full. How far you came too, because sometimes you don't realize like, yo, I was just back there like, and I made it here. So I did something, period, like, you know? I did something. Motivating. Mm -hmm, Because time goes like that, you know? We spent all 2020 in quarantine. Seriously. It's almost almost to the, like, the start of quarantine, like, last year. The anniversary of when it all started is, like, maybe two months away. Absolutely. So time is just, like, a a fixture. Like, we don't even really see it. Mm -hmm. So um, I I do think it's important because it also feels good when you go back two months from uh, when you started and you just read your old journals and I just noticed my vocabulary changes my thoughts get better they're a lot more positive and also forces you to be positive when you just think about the things that you're grateful for mm-hmm. so that's um I would highly recommend a morning routine that feels like that and then always having like a cup of water I usually have some mint or lemon in here um, or cucumber mm-hmm. something um hydrating and yeah, it's just taking care of mind, body, soul first thing in the morning. I like to just get up and make my bed. This way I don't get back in it. Like it's nothing for me to get back in it because I work from home. And I, I'm sure a lot of other people might work from home. Yeah. yeah, a lot of us is working from home right now. So I do think it's important that we get up, move our bodies, take care of our spirit before we even attend to business, before we attend to anyone. Mm-hmm. And then a nighttime routine that just feels like you have to unwind and um, I love the word aftercare. And I just feel like we require a lot of aftercare. Like even after this conversation, I know I'm gonna require some aftercare because I'm like, it's just the energy. Like you get on a high when you're talking and you just like, and, and all day when you just doing your job, you helping people out, you being of service, and then you gotta turn around and cook for yourself and clean. It, you need to decompress, you need to unwind, and you need some aftercare to digest what your day was like. That's crazy, like after every interview, which is a good thing because I'm passionate about it, I really do be on this high. It's like crazy, I'd be, I'd be like, I don't know, it's just the feeling I can't explain, but now I know what that is. Cause, and I'll just be like, I just gotta lay down for two seconds, I just lay down like this. For like, <laughs> <laughs> for like a couple minutes and then I'm like okay bet like I'm back to normal but it really is like a crazy adrenaline, adrenaline rush like that people go through they don't realize like that's what they're feeling yeah and you can't bring anxiety if you don't like know where to place it you know right like, you know how to handle it that's another thing too so imagine like what's happening to our body to our mind to our spirit when we do not take that moment to lay down where we do just like was on a high all day helping people out all day answering the phone all day and then doing it but it's even worse yeah and then we're like going to sleep on the phone making sure we digest other people's thoughts and experiences and opinions again like it's a lot it's a lot and I think it's important that we tune in with how we feel and we tune in with our thoughts it's the only way we can manifest the things that we want because we're allowing a clean slate to happen okay so this is really my thoughts this is really how I feel and this is really how I see myself it makes a big difference and I think just having a morning and a nighttime routine is so important to how you can manifest your life. I also think eating well makes a big difference. Eating for energy, intuitive eating, listening to your body, learning who you are as an emotional eater, just peeping game on yourself, like learn how to read the room type shit. You gotta like, oh, did this really make me feel good? Or did it? Yes, I talk about like, uh, I talk about instant versus like delayed gratification before on another episode. And I was like, you got to take a moment before you, you got to think about stuff before you do it. Like, it's like, okay, okay, like, if I eat this, it's going to be good right now, but it's not going to feel good tomorrow. If I drink this or smoke this, whatever the case may be. So, of course, like, don't live a boring life, but just think about, like, those actions, like, intentionally for real. Yes. And um, it's crazy, too, because um, how we how we feel affects how we eat and how we eat affects how we feel. Yeah. So the and everything has 
speak to that because I know you're going into emotionally and you have hella questions on that. I want people to know because they're going to be like, okay, yes, yes, I get it. But it's so hard for some people to change their habits, right? Mm-hmm. And I've been reading Atomic Habits and I'm like, why do you think it's so hard for people to change their habits? And like, what's, like, what have you found effective to truly like changing it? Um, you know, like practically, because it's like, it sounds good, but some people have a harder time than others. All right. I think it's really hard for a lot of us to change our habits because one, um, we're comfortable, we're complacent. I think another reason why it's hard for us to um, change our habits is because it reinforces our limiting beliefs about ourselves. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's now, how, how. <laughs> it reinforces yeah, it. It's not yourself for real, yeah. Yeah, it reinforces it. Like if you thought like for one second you couldn't do something, staying in that habit reinforces that you couldn't do it so you were right and don't play yourself again because you're right like you know and that is that is crazy but changing your habits changes your life and I just ordered Atomic Habits um me and my partner so good I'm doing it is? I really need the actual book though because it's one of those like you know take note type of books um I'm on chapter eight and I'm just like whoa like literally just like three weeks in I was like well, don't ask why I'm not done in three weeks. We'll tell it later. But um, it's really a good book. It makes it make sense practically. But yeah, continue. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I, me and my partner just ordered that book. We're going to read it together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, so yes, the habits. And um, I think that when it comes down to changing our habits, sometimes we get so absorbed with the idea that it's like all or nothing. It's like, I'm either going to go to the gym five days a week. I'm either going to drink my water. I'm either going to meditate every day. I'm going to journal every day. I'm going to do all of this or it's nothing. (laughs) And that's not so. Huh? The book talks about that. If it's basically like people give themselves these big, it's like, how are you going to go from not working at it all to saying that you're going to work out every single day? Like it's, it's not practical. And then, when you don't, when you miss the day, you end up feeling defeated. And then the mind like will trick you into being like, well, fuck it then. I can't do it. Or let me start tomorrow. And then tomorrow be like, let me start tomorrow. But that's the thing too with um, habits is that that's a part of the habit, not doing it. And, and it just reinforces why we shouldn't do it. So I also, it, it's, it's a lot of psychological breakdowns that happens as to why Mm -hmm. it's layers to it but i think for the most part um, like the rats you know like rats get reinforced with like positive all that type mm -hmm. it's really like that yeah and it's also really hard when um when when you want it so bad but you just you one probably never seen it done Mm -hmm. you two um if you have seen it done you you don't know anyone in your close circle that's gotten it done. Sometimes that's really hard for me. Sometimes when I, because when I manifested this apartment, I was like, I don't know anyone that's ever gotten a brownstone apartment. I don't know what that looks like. Like, and I was just like, oh, how can I do it? I've never seen it. But the second you- I'm from just, New York, you have never seen that. So, I'm from New York. Yeah, I'm actually from the project. So I, my whole neighborhood, we just never seen it. So I was just like, oh, how can I- be a part of something if I've just never seen anyone do it. And I think it just looks like slow steps, slow, slow steps. So like, I would just like, okay, right here is what I can do. I can start a rehabilitation program for my student loans. I can do that to help my credit. This is something I can do. It's always just starting where you're at. Even when it comes down to working out, like sometimes we get absorbed with, I need to get new clothes. I need to get, weights I need to get the bands I need to get the yoga mat like you can literally just start off with your body and the floor if you and that's it work your way up to the yoga mat when you get the yoga mat work your way up to the weights work your way up to the resistant bands because you don't want to buy all this stuff and you did not create the foundation or the habits or the habits to use it and now you should collect the dust yes and taking up space, like, and then you looking at it feeling bad because you ain't doing nothing with it. Because like, you ain't do it. But if you were reinforcement, like looking at things, like it's like 
if you place something somewhere, this they talk about this in the Atomic Habits. Like if you place like your water bottle right by your bed, you're going to drink it and things like that. That's a whole other topic, but yes. Yeah. Um, I like to sometimes I'll have like my mat rolled out before I go to bed. I'll just roll it out. Just so when I step out of bed, I'm like, oh yeah, it's still good time. Mm-hmm. So I like to do that. Um, But I would also just recommend just starting where you're at and baby, baby steps. Like if you're trying to lose weight or even gain weight and you know you need to work out, just start off with once a week. That's it. And then after two, three weeks, then bump it up to two weeks. I also think it's important for us to find movement that we enjoy. Like it needs to be mindful. You know, like we like if you know you hate ab workouts, do not go search up an ab workout and push through a workout that you know you're not interested in. There's other ways, there's Pilates, there's yoga, there's other type of strengthening workouts, there's HIT, there's and dancing. That's my, favorite. that's my favorite, that's what I found that's like works for me. Yoga yeah. Hit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's dancing, there's hula hoops, there's jump ropes, there's so many different variations to for you to hit your wellness goals. And it's, it's a journey. And every single day, like just try to try something kind of new. Like, okay, yesterday I tried yoga. It was a little boring. I couldn't concentrate. Tomorrow, let me up it and do a, a dance workout. And then the day after, two days later, I'll do Pilates. Like switch it up and learn your style. Just like we have a love language and a communication style, we have a body workout style. Like it's just something that speaks to us. So like a self love language. You posted something about that. Can you Oh yeah. It? Yeah. That's my bag of self love language because um we're so eager to show people how we receive love from other people. Um, but in the same breath, if that's how we receive love from other people, when we do it to ourselves, what does that feel like? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I noticed for me personally, the more I love myself in my self love language, the less I require it from other people. Like it's, it's the less I need it. And I'm like, mm, like everything other people gives me is a surplus. <laughs> it's an addition. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it's like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know and that's why I think it's real real important for us to love on ourselves in our own love language so when you take the quiz and you're like okay I'm a words of affirmation girl and I'm a quality time girl we don't then need to go tell people oh it's words of affirmation talk to me nice oh I like quality I like quality time spend time with me no it's a dub for that. We're not giving our love and how we receive love to external sources. We're going to see what that's hitting for with ourselves. So if I like words of affirmation, I'm going to see what it look like and feel like to speak kind to myself. I'm going to do some mirror work. I'm going to say my affirmations. I'm going to look at myself and I'm going to dress up for no reason. And I'm going to talk to myself nice. The more you do that, the more you take yourself on little dates. I like to call it mirror dates where I just, I call it. That's, that's, that's cute. Yeah, little mirror dates um, where I just dress up and I'm just in the mirror with it. And I'm like, you're cute. That booty poking. That booty poking. I'd be like, what's up? (laughs) Yeah. You (laughs) right. You know? You just start feeling yourself. So that's important. Those moments are very important. It really is. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. During the... Well, when I went home, I had to quarantine because I got COVID, um, and I was and I was testing positive for like almost two months. So I was in a room for like almost two months by myself. But when I say it was like a super transformative experience, it really was because I was like with myself. I had to have fun with myself. I had to just like and although I feel like I do that a lot here in New York and even during this whole quarantine period, it's like that time I really had no choice, you know. And it, honestly, I think like I came out like 10 times, like with way more love for myself. I'm like, oh, you are actually very cool. Like you are actually like that girl. So in which I already knew that, but it just reinforced that. So I, I just was feeling good by myself. And I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, I don't need none of y'all. <laughs> like, that makes, yes, that makes me yeah. smile so hard. Like I'm smiling right here. Yeah. And, and that's so beautiful. And I think that that's really, really important because when we do move like that, mm-hmm. just it, it's so many things is just gonna roll off our bag. It's like, oh, you, you don't love me the way I love me. Bye. <laughs> Gotta go because I'm dope. And that's so. one of the things, like, 
especially us girls that we see it on Twitter all the goddamn time. It's just like how men, you know, ancient, just how like girls are like begging men to like be in their life and stuff like that. And we've all been through it and whatnot. But it's like truly once you like tap into that, like that's all you got to do. Like the, that's where the answer is. And people are like on Clubhouse just talking about all this stuff about dating and all these nuances. Like the answer is really within yourself. Like once you get that right, everything flows. Like everything's totally fine. And you will find the partner that you're supposed to find. And y'all not gonna have to be on Clubhouse trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Yeah. You know, I used to feel like um, I was bugging when I said that. And I used to have to like... Um, try to switch my brain off because sometimes when we create this because I personally believe that the more we step in alignment with who we're supposed to be we attract the right relationship so we attract the right man we attract the right friendships we attract the right conversations even with even if it's with different our same people like for my parents like the more I step into my purpose the better quality conversations I have with my parents so um and and that wasn't the case years ago having good quality conversations with them so um I sometimes I do feel like that is true but then sometimes I feel like when I create that rhetoric that that's true then I start thinking like what's this person about did I did I attract this like so I, I do think it's a fine there, there's a fine line between and it's it's, a, it's practice and discernment in that as well like yeah. like if you meet a shitty person or a shitty friend it doesn't mean you attracted that it doesn't mean that your alignment was to meet that shitty person it was just like it was in, a, in the cards for you to see how you was going to deal with that mm -hmm. so. or you were a catalyst to help them in some way yeah you know I mean? like That's, like mm -hmm. god needed you to do that because you were the only one who could for that person i think about that a lot too that's a really nice way to see that yeah i think about that because it's like it's not all about choose it's about every it's i feel like there's a huge, huge bigger picture and sometimes certain people can handle certain things and it's like if they were like on a lower frequency like you definitely brought them up a little bit just by being with them they might have brought mm -hmm. you down a little bit but you are going to be able to overcome that because you know you know what's going on but i feel that yeah yes okay so um with that being said okay we can go into well let's go back a little bit um you were saying that you never saw like anyone you know getting a brownstone or, or anything like that and that kind of brings me to the fact of like this um african-americans period just black people period like all of us like we don't see people eating healthy we don't see that whole thing and it kind of brings me to the whole kiki palmer situation do you remember that oh i do remember that uh, so yeah kiki palmer mentioned something about um, that EBT card should only be used for healthy foods. Like, what are your thoughts on that um, as someone who is into, like, holistic health and healthy yeah. food? Like that, yeah. I think that um, I love me some Kiki Palmer. I, I really Kiki do. Mm -hmm. I love her. her. Were, good, were amazing, honestly, but. Her what? Her intentions. Like, they weren't. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her intentions were very, very well. Um. I don't know if you saw, but I did write a tweet above that and it kind of was going viral because, um, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of programs for people who are on EBT and food stamps to eat healthier. There's a pro program called Snap Ed and it's nationwide. It's in every single state. And it is a program that allows them to get food bucks and buy more veggies and less like meat and dairy. And so there are programs out there. I just think that when she said that, she didn't really know much. And it, w it came off a bit classes and insensitive because I don't think that anyone on the planet, including myself, I don't think anyone should be mandating what people should eat. I think we all need to be encouraging one another to understand how food makes us feel. So if you are somebody that eats a lot of junk food, you do eat a lot of deli sandwiches, you're always at the bodega, just ordering like so getting soda and juice and candy and stuff, candy and stuff like that. If you are somebody that's like that, how are you feeling? How does that make you feel? Like, do you feel vivacious and vibrant and energy? Or are you angry, easily aggravated, irritable, um, just angry often, like, like, tune in with how you feel. Are you tired after you have, after you just had this coffee with your three sugars? Are you tired? Are you crashing two hours later, just tuning in with how food makes us feel? I think that's the best thing we can do 
when it comes down to like helping people eat better because people know yeah people know how they feel people know they're like oh after you eat a cheeseburger and some fries you ain't take a nap yes it's tired sandwiches i'd be like ready to go to sleep for real and you know i literally go to sleep after it never feels yeah and that's not a coincidence that's not a coincidence it a lot of things is happening in the body when we're not eating the things we're supposed to be eating it's the body breaking it down it's the body deciphering what they can take from it like and sometimes it ain't shit but they're working so hard to see what they can take from it it's like it's, it's like, like it ain't shit in the sandwich why you put this in my body like it's like girl yeah and it's like now we gotta break this shit down and we can't even use nothing in it oh my god i love that okay so i am a chip eater and you read me the filth on one of your youtube videos about the chips um and just like even salty things and stuff like that and it was so interesting and like insightful the way you broke down like how uh, each thing like makes you feel like if you're craving something creamy you're you are you want to be nurtured which kind of is like reminds me of the whole thing of the, the whole eating ice cream after when your heart is broken and stuff like that um i love chips i haven't ate have i got any this year I don't know, but I've been doing really good with not eating chips. So can you um, talk about that though? Like each one and, or what you can remember off the top of the dome and yeah. Yeah. So um, when it comes to eating, is that what you call that? Emotional emotional eating? eating? Yeah. I mean, we're all emotional eaters. We're we're all going to emotionally eat. That's, that's who we are. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, when it comes down to emotional eating, it's two things. It could literally be the body literally saying, hey, I'm a little malnourished. I kind of need these nutrients. Can you go get them? Yeah. Or, <laughs> or it is um, you seeking validation or fulfilling a void in something else in your life, like a lack of intimacy, a job that you don't like, you know, a relationship that just doesn't feel good to you anymore. It can look like you're craving a relationship. Like you're literally like, I want a man. I want a friend. I want a a woman. I want someone in my life. Or it could just be your lack of money. Like you just feel like, damn, like I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So this is what I can control. I can order myself these fr- this hamburger and these fries because even though I don't have no control of my money, no control of my life, no control of my job, I and the way satisfaction from this this is how I seek my satisfaction, mm-hmm. and it's very very harmful. But we all do it. But it's yeah. harmful, and that's why it's important for us to feed our lives. Like when you peep game, like damn, like every time I used to have this job like six years ago where every time I was done off of a shift, I craved steak. I just wanted steak. Steak was going to be the only thing that was going to make me feel better. I wanted the tender steak that was also very chewy. So I, that just is signs that I'm aggravated and malnourished. And I'm just like, that's all I want is steak. I ain't want no vegetables. I ain't want nothing but steak. And it was because steak was seen as a treat for me I was like damn I just spent all day doing something I don't want to do talking to people I don't want to talk to I'm I'm doing too much of the things that I wasn't serving myself at all what I'm about to do is order this steak because I'm about to serve myself I deserve this steak because I gave my energy to people all day damn that makes sense um I would always get chips like back in the day if it was like you know from a drunk night out and I'm just going home whatever to myself I would go get chips like from the bodega and just be in the bed eating my chips like after being out with a bunch of people having a good ass time like those chips somehow like was comfortable and satisfied me another thing I would always do is order wing stop after like you know a little weekend rendezvous I would come back home and like for some reason I just always order wing stop or crab leg literally every my my roommates are like damn again wing it's like dang okay now that makes sense because it's just like a satisfaction thing and obviously whatever I was doing or wherever I was was not satisfying me for me to have to come you know like it and wasn't. I never thought about the reason why I just thought it was just like you know I'm home but I'm about to chill and have yeah. a food. although it can be like that but some sometimes a lot of times it's really emotional eating yeah it really is and and I think that that's an important conversation to have like what satisfies you what feels fulfilling 
you know, like sometimes there has been times where I've been at a social outing and I just was not fulfilled. Like I could be around in a group full of people and I just still feel a little lonely or I just feel a little like this is not my space. So let me go home and go do something that's in my space. I know that I love these. I love Red Hot Chips. Me too. That's exactly what I eat. And the Flame and XX Hot, they don't really have that that much in New York. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like anything hot. I, I want you to make my nose run. Literally. <laughs> you would love the food in Texas then, if you like Oh, uh, I got to go to Texas. Everybody <laughs> gains weight. No, literally. Yes. <laughs> it's good. So, and then you said even like with the chewing, you're like, you're anxious. Like, what's that of, like about? Or it's just yeah. all the same thing. Yeah, so it's all it's all relative. It's all the same thing. But I know that crunchy foods, it's like us literally releasing anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's like us being frustrated. And we don't even realize it. Like a lot of times, even when we chew gum, we're just a little frustrated. We're just like, mm-hmm. like, we don't even know that our mind and our nerves are being reinforced by the consistent chewing. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's so interesting the way hormones and nerves and just like neurotransmitters work. Like they, they always work in our favor and always work against it. And it's how we eat that feeds and send the, sends the right signals, the right messages to what it's going to do. Is it going to reinforce my health or is it going to reinforce disease and illness and sickness? Even a lot of like my smoker friends, like they say that um, it's not even about like the high anymore. It's more so just like that inhale and exhalation of just like, just the act of it is like soothing to them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that makes it because just I can't even like breathing, like meditation, like that feels good. So in a sense, it's like they that's how they feel when they're doing that. Yeah, my laptop. I gotta charge my laptop. Um. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, it's just the art of it, you know. And I know, I know a lot of smokers that say that. <laughs> you see my pajamas? Yo, you cute. Yeah. You see it? You those see are packages. Oh yeah, I like those. Thank you. They're silk. Um, I love silk pajamas. They make me feel luxurious. Give me some more of those. Some more silk and like yeah. pajamas. Like that's one thing I really haven't got into yet. I need to. <laughs> Oh, it's a game changer. You just start feeling like the baddest bitch before you go to bed. <laughs> okay, we're set. Yes. Um, um, yeah. Where were we? Okay, yes. So basically it's about like what are what do your cravings really mean? Like that's really what it all boils down to and figuring mm-hmm. that out as well. Figuring that out. Figuring like, do I need to heal something in my life? Or um, do I need, how, how can I feed my life? Mm-hmm. we're so quick to think like let me just eat this away this is what I have control over but just what does feeding my life look like does it look like me going back to school or developing the skills that I need in order for me to get the job that I really do want and that's I think a lot a, a lot of us struggle with that having a job we don't like mm-hmm. when you have a job you don't like it really fucks with our purpose if uh, because I know we need money so it's just like it it, if it messes with a lot of things like um how we show up for ourselves because it's like I do a job I don't want like I'm gonna eat this it's important for us to have creative hobbies go out on the weekend and get fucked up because this job stressed me out all week exactly or just can't wait for Friday to hit dreading Monday I I always said that that's one thing I've stuck true to I never want to be somebody who's waiting to although not to say you ha- some people have to because we have to make me you know make ends meet and things like that but my goal I guess is to always like not have to wait till Friday to feel good I want to feel good every day absolutely that's one of my absolutely that's one of my greatest fears um like and I told myself that like years ago when I had a job I hated I was like I never I don't want this at all like I see my parents do it I know for a fact that I never want to have a job that I don't like because I need money and it just takes a toll on my mental and spiritual and emotional health Mm -hmm. it really does so I do recommend that if you have a job that you do not like absolutely look into a creative hobby devote your time to a creative hobby wake up way before you need to go to work organize yourself set your intentions dream a little and then like 
from work to feed that hobby and maybe you can even make it a full-time thing if you want to absolutely and after work you know like play with yourself take yourself out on little dates like and when I say dates I mean like dates like let's walk around the neighborhood let me go grab a smoothie let me try a new cafe let me do something with myself by myself let me go to a museum and exhibit let me see what shit is hitting for all the time I know a lot of time we don't have no energy but like oh but I I encourage you to push yourself I encourage everyone to just push themselves to create to have a creative hobby it adds more joy to our we do not want to pass. And then the next day it's like, I w- oh, she was working. She went to work. It's breaking up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. That's okay, crazy. I just paid my Wi-Fi. Okay, we're good now. Okay, great. Perfectly. You said um, you were saying you don't want to um, pass and something like that. Yeah, you don't want to pass and then like, oh, like you were a worker, you know, yeah. and, and that's what a lot of people can like, oh, she worked hard. Like, okay. <laughs> like, how did that change anybody's life or my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, like, was I kind? Was I playful? Mm-hmm. Was I like generous to people? Did I make an impact? Like, it's like that. And it's hard to, it's hard to be who we're supposed to be when we're in space that that don't reinforce that idea that we have of ourselves Mm -hmm. so I think on your own it's important to constantly think about who you want to be and try to reinforce that person by picking up practical habits small habits it's just like little things that you can do every single day that aligns with who you want to be I like to think about it this way like my future self she a millionaire so I'd be like what do millionaires do yeah, I always think lately, as the past two years or so, I've been, like, thinking, like, I do want to be a wife one day. Like, I am. Like, I, I just kind of, of course, everyone thinks that growing up. But, like, I really start thinking about, like, oh, wait, if I'm about to be a wife with somebody's mama, I got to wake up and act like that. Like, somebody's mama is not going to be watching E for, like, two. Like, you know, I'm like, yes, you might be, but it's, like, you got to, you know, think that way. Yeah. And... Mm-hmm. And then it begs the question, like, what does a wife look like? What does she do? Yeah. Or what do I look like as a wife? Not, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, exactly. Mm-hmm. What do I look like as a wife? Um, what type of habits will I have as a wife? Am I waking up early? Um, is he waking up early? Who's waking up early to go make food and we'll walk the dog and play with the kids like who's doing things like that it's building those habits before it even happens just like right back to working out with what you got mm-hmm. another so. thing I always think about too is like how of course we are like and, and another thing is fortunately our generation we have like the privilege to do that you know like our ancestors didn't have the privilege to do any of this work because they were going through what you know like what they were going through and it's like they had to figure out how to if they weren't gonna die that day, you know what I'm saying? So what I think about is like, I am my ancestor's wildest dreams and then I'm also someone's ancestor as well, you know? And I'd be like, yo, that part. I'd be like, if I'm someone's ancestor, how do I, how do I walk? How do I move? How do I talk? Because my bloodline, us as just African-Americans period, like it depends, like it's us, like especially living in this specific historical time like we were chosen to live in this crazy time right now with covid with everything the upright with trump and all of that it's like so how are you about to move but this is like this this is your life you know and that just makes me, i'm getting chills right now like that just makes me get up and like want to kill the day um it you know whatever the case may be yeah so. yeah that's amazing but, i actually never see it that way yeah um thank you because that is a great way to see it like i am somebody's ancestor you really are. Mm-hmm. Wow, when you really think about like that, a lot of shit. Okay, and you are doing the work, like you and you. Mm-hmm. You already are doing like the positive work. You know what I'm saying? Like you're already leaving your mark um, with this holistic thing. That's so huge for our community. I commend you for that. Like, mm-hmm. and it's so hard to even um, just like tell people like how to eat and what to eat. People are just so defensive about all that kind of stuff. So. I commend you for even this way you approach it. It's it's perfect. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, it took me a while to get here. It really did. And 
I just noticed like for a while, um, you know what's so crazy? Like a year ago, I blew up on Twitter because for, I've been talking about this health shit for like six, seven years. Wow. Yeah, I've been talking about it nonstop for six to seven years. That's and, crazy. Yeah, and I'm just now blowing up on Twitter. And I really think it's because before I used to feel like nobody cares about health. Like they, no, no everyone's like, oh, right about mental health. That's how I feel right now. Although people can act like they care about it like mental health for real for real like uh like medications just everything I feel like people are talking about it but on a light way that I think that I don't know but continue mm-hmm. that's how I feel right now that's how you feel it oh it sounds like I we got to do a little it sounds like we should probably do a little clubhouse talk a little, yes. little talky talk yeah okay. um well we, let's not promote any other platform but this one right now <laughs> <laughs> So you, you said that you were, you've been, like, you just started to blow up and you've been doing Yeah, I just started to blow yeah, up and I, re- mm-hmm. I really feel like I, I blew up like crazy um, recently within the last year, year and a half. It's because I was just myself. I, I, I wasn't myself before. I, before I was just like, oh, broccoli is important, everyone. <laughs> like, you know, I was like so timid. I was just like spitting out facts. I wasn't making things relatable. But then I was just like, this is the way I talk and this is who I am. I'm about to get on this camera and tell these motherfuckers they need to eat their broccoli. They need to eat their kale. They need to eat their bok choy. And when I started talking like that, <laughs> when I started talking like that, so many people just like when I just started being myself and talking like myself so many people gravitated towards that and I will never go back to being standard and boring and hey you eat the broccoli I would never do that now I'm in my bag and on your I literally was crying laughing last night on your YouTube you was like um not me with this comb I'm <laughs> um, you were basically like uh it's your inner child trying to come out sometimes and you were like let me out the booth let me out the booth I was like that is funny as hell <laughs> it really is like a lot of things is your inner child like trying to just like be like yo I'm right here like if you tap back into me we got this you know yeah I mean? talk to me tag talk me to in talk like, to me nice. like <laughs> Oh my God, that's so good. Okay, I want to let you go because I know you have something at three. Um, let me make sure, run down. I feel like we covered everything that's major. Yeah, this exactly. is a funny question. Oh wait, last, before that, about gut health. Like, mm-hmm. something quick about that. I um, talk, about that, talk about that a little bit because I love kombucha. So whenever I like um, have any sponsor deals with kombucha, I talk about gut health. But um, how does like gut health connect to mental health? If you can explain that to, you know, my Ooh, audience. In that um, absolutely. So I'm actually dropping a gut health book this week. Ooh, yes, it's so called gut, Yeah, it's called Gut Check. It is happening this week. I'm dropping it. It's a beautiful, beautiful ebook. And it is about how to naturally detox your gut and how to eat for mental well- health pretty pretty much because the gut is the second brain in our gut that is where 90 percent of our second brain yeah the gut is the second brain it is um it is where everything lives like the gut holds 90 percent of our serotonin it's 90 percent of our serotonin is produced in the gut and serotonin is the mood boosting happy hormone right and on top of that um aside from serotonin it also um, 70% of our immune system is in the gut. So how we defend and protect our body against certain illnesses, certain diseases, it all has to do with the gut and anxiety, depression, mental health issues, hypertension are all part of diseases that exist in the body. And they a lot of that stems from the gut. When we do not take care of our gut, aka IBS, aka which is irritable bowel syndrome, I suffer from that, um, as well as leaky gut syndrome. So those are just like pretty much different um, stomach issues that happen when we do not take care of our gut. And a lot of us experiences it in like tidbits, like when we're bloated or constipated or we're just like uncomfortable and in the gut area that is what's happening so gut health looks like getting your probiotics in it's really really important for us to balance the bad bacteria with good bacteria our body needs 
good bacteria and bad bacteria to even fight with each other to exist to just coexist pretty much and the, what that looks like is eating a variety of different type of foods we needed uh, like w- they say eat the rainbow and that's big facts like we should be eating different color vegetables often we should be eating different type of textures often those type of things build good and bad bacteria in our body for them to balance one another out and create a healthy gut system and we need it and if you just notice like my breath is off my skin is off my mood is off a lot of that is stemming from poor gut health and we just have no one thinks about gut health like that's just I mean, people do, but naturally it's not one of the top things to think about. Yeah, you know, for sure. I love to think about like everything, but gut health, no one thinks about how that's really connected to, it's like to to your brain. It, yeah. It's, it's like literally the signals that stem from the brain, stem from the gut, they're connected. Yeah. And um, it, it's, gut health is so, so important. It, it is the mind body connection literally like when we think about connecting our mind with our body it is that dopamine is created in the gut Mm -hmm. you know like dopamine is what motivates us it's what gets us up and going so when your gut is poor and your dopamine and your serotonin is low you're low you're low like you're low so it's important for us to eat nutrient dense vibrant colorful food and most importantly just eating for energy eating for wellness like if you're if you're if your food don't look energizing dub it's not a high frequency food it's a low frequency food low frequency foods looks like breads pasta meat low life they like they're just like they're not in the life cycle, you yeah. know, they don't rotate or whatever. It's happening, yeah, with them, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, if you notice that you're not going to the bathroom often, add more greens, add more fiber, you know, definitely have, um, take a probiotic. Another thing that's great for the gut is just taking care of your mind, like going to therapy, yeah. having daily meditation, stretching and connecting with your body, always moving your body. That like we think that we're depressed, but we're really just not feeding our gut right, and our gut needs movement. It likes it. It it def- it helps it become stronger, so it can help us. And it's just it, it's 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 a holistic way to approach gut health, but I do think everything in our, in our um, spiritual life, um, because I do think our bodies are, I think what we're experiencing right now, like life is an experience yeah. right now. I personally believe that we're spiritual beings. I don't know what everyone else believes. I'm not very religious, but I'm very spiritual. And um, I just know for a fact, like scientifically proven, whether you're spiritual or not, that's the gut and the mental go hand in hand. And the way we take care of our mental doesn't have to look like medication at all. It could just look like going to therapy, even though some people do need medication. Let me, some people do need medication. Absolutely. Let me, let me reinforce that. Some people do need medication, but a lot of our answers lies in our diet and how we feed our system. So at first it's always a good bet before trying medication, or even I think that maybe like if you do, if you do, a lot of people that I know, even personally, like medication got me to a certain point, and then from there, I was fine without it, you know. So it just, yeah, and we're not doctors, but yes, he just own. Yeah, absolutely. But just a few things that's like really bad for the gut is like dairy, fried foods, um, excessive amount of sugars. So like in, like soda, sugary drinks. Um, I already said bread and over and overeating is really bad for the gut too. So um, if we're just like talking mindlessly and that's why it goes back to just being important and having intentional conversations with people and being intentional with your time and energy, because if we're just like eating and watching a Netflix show, and we're not even being mindful. We could body a whole plate. And now the gut is like, sis, I did not need this. I didn't need all of this sitting down watching Netflix so long yeah. to and how how am I going to how, how am I going to break all this down right now you, you're giving me like 30 minutes to break all this down and a, another thing is too that's important is just taking care of our stress in healthy ways so sometimes that looks like music therapy it could be as simple as just getting good sleep yeah 
you know, like a lot of us are just tired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're just tired. That's the thing, literally. People be trying to grind all day, shine all day, but it's like, take your ass to sleep for a second. It's really bad. <laughs> like, and now okay, you- um, Mm-hmm. go ahead no I was just gonna say that like we're just tired <laughs> yeah literally okay so that's really good especially for the new year everything we've talked about like people you know have all these goals and these intentions these habits that they want to create and that's just like a this is a great way to go like into the new year so thank you so much um let's see what's the craziest thing you've heard on clubhouse like on some funny stuff like that you just like that's not actually right or just like if you can recall a wild thing you've heard on Clubhouse, because I've been hearing some crazy stuff. I'm just like, yo, what are you talking about? <laughs> Clubhouse, know how to, Clubhouse know how to smoke my shit. Clubhouse know how to get me tight. Like, oh, oh my God. Uh, oh, my internet connection is acting a little slow. You can see me? You can see you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So one thing I, I heard on Twitter, I mean, Clubhouse, Chatty House. The chatty house. house, yeah. Was this girl was like, she has experience and experience, and that there's no such thing as experts, especially wellness experts. There's no such thing as experts because your body is an experience, and that um, <laughs> you don't need. She said, you, she said she doesn't need to go to school. <laughs> she doesn't need to go to school to help people eat better and live better. She, you just have to know your body. Like you don't need to go to school. That school is white washed and man-made and that it's just like Dr. Sabi um didn't go to school and stuff like that uh and um there's some truth there's some truth to like the medical industry being extremely racist there's some truth to um when even when you study nutrition like we're going based off a of Eurocentric standards we're not going based off of what's good for the African and Black bodies but and although that's true I the, the I just could not help myself. I'm so outspoken. I just couldn't help myself. I was like, you absolutely need education. You absolutely need education. How dare you get on this platform and talk about you don't need to be certified. You don't need education from these white institutions. Yes, the fuck you do. Like, are you crazy? Like, you're just about to tell people anything. The fact that, like, these institutions are white, like, take that away from us like you know what i'm saying we like i feel like we let like these white things because they they made them white things but it's like it's knowledge we need knowledge like that's that's what they want us to do they want us to be kept away from it so we can't let you know let the mind trick us when it comes to that like yeah and it's (laughs) it's a cop-out it's to me it's a cop-out for you doing the work and um i don't i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it their head to make themselves feel better about what they didn't do yeah and one thing that I say that I really like about who I am and what I do is um it feels far in saying that but um it's one of my questions was what do you love the most about yourself so I guess that kind of goes into that too okay okay so I'll say (laughs) so um one thing I really like about that I kind of wish more people were a little bit like was just understanding biodiversity and just understanding that what works for one person might not work for another person. Every single time I have a session with a client, I'm never assuming that what worked for my client before that is going to work for them. And that is important. It is important for us as wellness experts to encourage people to get to know their bodies and tune in with them. I can't do that for you. Like no one can do that for you. So it is so important for us to tell tap back in with who we are and how we feel. And then when we're done doing that, tap into how we want to feel. Mm-hmm. So I, that is the number one thing I would, I would want, okay. want anyone to take away from that. And I think my favorite thing about myself right now is becoming like, I'm, I'm really getting to know my hair and I'm really getting to but yes <laughs> I'm really getting to know my hair and I'm really like learning how to speak Spanish and I'm picking up a lot of creative hobbies so my favorite thing is that I'm eager to be creative um I'm very very fun and vibrant but most of all I'm getting to know my crown I and I love this I love this I love I like I'm almost 30 and I, I'm still getting to know her and it's just mm-hmm. it's amazing so that's one of my favorite things I'm loving on myself in like in way in inward ways and outward ways and I really like it here I 
love that okay um so we always do normally i do this before but we just started talking and getting into it um my pen pal letter people like write in or they dm me questions and things like that and so for today we have let me read it i found it right here okay so it says dear penny how do you be okay of accepting the unknown and trusting the process of letting go slash what's to come signed it's anonymous i never say anyone's name but yes so you can answer first or i can answer first however you want to do it wait can you i kind of don't understand the question so it's how how to how to how to be okay of accepting the unknown and trusting the process of letting go slash whatever's to come mm. so basically i'm thinking about letting go and like except and like kind of like walking you know, for me, it would be in faith and stuff like that. So I think that's what they're asking. Okay, so how do we walk in faith? How to be okay with just not knowing what's to come. Basically. Oh, yeah. Um, I know it sounds cliche, but I, I'm, I'm just a firm believer that um, everything that's for us is supposed to be for us, period. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. I'll, 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 I'm going to get in a light because this is important combo. Mm -hmm. um, I think that everything that we're going through is for a reason i probably should have closed my closet <laughs> but i feel like every okay i feel like everything we're going through is for a reason every I, we are exactly where we're supposed to be i think that um i try i encourage everyone for me i don't i try not to think about the future for too long because if there's anything 2020 taught us is that we need to be <laughs> Pivot. we need to be able to pivot at any moment so I think that that's a huge part of being able to trust the process and surrendering and learning how to flow because you don't we, we we really don't know and because we don't know we need to really focus on what we can control and I think the only thing we can control is the present moment it's like the and future the everything we've talked about today your every day and like habits. you can control that and you can be who you want to be if you do those habits and you won't really yeah. have to worry about your future because mm -hmm. you're already kind of walking in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And practicing gratitude about who you are now. Practice gratitude about who you are now. And then also try to remain in the present moment as much as you can, because it's the only moment we got. Like the past already happened and the future didn't even come yet. So I try to be real present when I'm talking to people. I'm looking them in their eyes. When I'm connecting with things like I'm reading, I'm just reading the book like i try not to do too many things at once because i want to experience things i wanted to experience this conversation i want to experience my book i want to experience a movie so just try to be in the present moment try to practice gratitude as much as you can because when you practice gratitude it reminds you that everything is always working in your favor the glass is always half full so <laughs> it's yeah. yeah so what's your take on that say definitely I am um religious I'm Christian um but I also believe in letting people believe in whatever they want to believe in because honestly I think it's just one thing up there and people have just called it different things that's like kind of what I believe but, I love um, that I, believe I actually love that I don't meet a lot of um people who are Christian that say things like that I think that's really beautiful that you give grace and space for people to believe what they want yeah it's a global thing it's like wherever you were placed in the world like people just named it different things but it's all the same principles and everything if you really like look into it but i would say like it's actually kind of fun and magical to like not know what's in your future and if you live in abundance what's in your future is bigger than anything you've ever known anything you ever thought anything you ever daydreamed or imagined you don't even know what it is because it's like that ab abundance and like amazing and so it's like if you think about it like that it's like oh I don't want to know because if if I know what's going to happen it's it's limiting it's limited to just my thoughts and what I've seen like you like you say but if I be like okay I'm just gonna trust God and do the work you gotta do the work you have to do what you gotta do every day then whatever is going to come to you is going to be crazy like it's going to be wild you're gonna be like wow like how did that how did I even get here sometimes I certain experience I've had I'm like how did I even get here it's because I was present in the moment I did the work and I just like walks like like they say walk by faith not by sight like absolutely you can't limit yourself you can settle and stuff like that like because we are naturally like we naturally self-doubt we naturally think a little bit negatively you know like that's just a, a brain thing so mm -hmm. it's like we don't even think the best so that's how I like am okay with the unknown 
I love, um, I love that response. Oh my God, girl, I love that response. I think that's so important that life is an adventure. We don't need to know. It's fun. It's magical. Like literally, I said this in another podcast, like this guy that I was dating, shout out to him. He was great um, and still is, but um, he, um, like we would just like walk, right? Like we just like, like walk, like, you know, through Brooklyn or whatever. And he would always be like, let's go a different way. Like, we never know what we can stumble on. Even if we're just going to go get coffee or go get lunch. And we'd always stumble on a better coffee spot or just something cool that changed our conversation or something that just like, just, you know, just like made the day just more magical. And like, that's how you can look at life. Like, you don't have to know what's around the corner. That's kind of boring. Like, you know, so, and then letting go, like you said, what's for you is for you and it's going to be for you. And the more you hold on to things, the more you can't pick new things up. So you're going to be like, you know, so like let things go. If they don't, if they aren't in alignment, if they don't flow, if they don't feel good, um, pray and like, let it go. Meditate on it. Let it go. Like just be intentional. So yeah. that's what I would have to say to you. I know exactly I love- who this is. So I, yeah. So um, let's see. Okay. Um, I think that's it. So definitely let people know where to find you. I'm going to put everything, um, in the description and then send me the links to all your stuff or I'll go find it. Um, cause this will mm-hmm. come out probably next Monday. Okay. Coming up. Oh, that's yeah. So, oh, I have a yes, book club yes. if you're free, if you're free on Tuesdays. I have a Oh book my God. Club. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be talking. I would love to. About, we're talking about the artist way. By Julia Cameron. I have that book. And I never read it. Oh, <laughs> it's time to read it. I bought it right after undergrad when I decided to like go the creative route, and I just it's just sitting here. So yes, that's good. Yeah, that's perfect. I highly, I, I recommend that book. So yeah, it's twelve weeks of like intense journal um, prompts and self love exercises where we take ourselves on little mini dates, and um, it's it's very it's a very powerful book. So I'll be one hour every Tuesday from seven to eight p.m. We'll be just talking about the book and working on a chapter week by week. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm gonna post about it. So maybe some of the listeners will be there too. I love that. Cool. Yeah. And um, so where can people find you? And any and even like if you have a last last words. The floor okay. is yours and it close out. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So I do want to express gratitude. This was such an amazing conversation. Uh, I just feel love it. It was so fun. Like I feel energized, like in a good day. Me too. My heart feels full. I really appreciate that you check my YouTube out. Like I I just I appreciate you, girl. Like it 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 does a lot when I do these podcasts and people do their research. Like I just feel like thank you. I feel nice. So thank you so much. I want to express my gratitude to you for you sharing your platform with me. And um, you can find me at Twitter and Instagram, L E Ariel Simone. Um, I am a holistic nutritionist as well as, um, I do a lot of bodega work. So I go inside the bodegas and make them a little bit healthier, rearrange it. Okay. I didn't see that. Yeah. So that's my day job. My day job is, um, creating the promotional content and, um, just also helping out bodegas, like be a little bit more healthier, like fresh produce, putting it into the front, Mm -hmm. replacing the um soda and stuff with water like it's it's really fun um and the last thing I would want anyone oh you can check out my website too I show a lot of my work there um last thing I would like to leave everyone with is just try to figure out what alignment looks like for you and show up as that person every single day in small concrete ways so maybe it's just waking up an extra 30 20 minutes um, 20, 30 minutes earlier, or maybe it's just lotioning your body a little bit longer. It's the small things that make a big difference. You know, like I just, I moisturize my feet and I just feel like, oh, you silky. It's <laughs> things like that. It's things like that. And when I feel silky, I talk silky. So I am silky. <laughs> I love that. That's what I would say. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you for even being like, yes, I will definitely do this. Um, and also just being like, so, you know, like actually invested, you know, and not looking at it as oh, another podcast or whatever. I appreciate you. I'm glad I find you. I'm very intentional with who I interview, like, and just like even the combos that I have, like, I'm not in this for anything, but to make someone's life better. 
Um, and to just make people have more empathy and like think for themselves. And so that's, I don't, I don't play with my space. So thank you for sharing space with me. I'm so happy. It was so good. I feel so good. And I even feel though, good. yeah, I feel like it's a, this is like a part of my like habits and my, you know, things I wanted to do for the year is being more consistent with this podcast and doing truly like the work that I know God put me on here to do. So to share that with you is just reinforces what the whole podcast was about. Cause I've been doing the work. I've been eating what I got to eat, working out what I got to do. It is like, okay, everything just flowing and feels amazing. And I'm just so happy and grateful. Thank you. So thank thank you, you so much. And we definitely will do the book club. Um, once Corona's whatever, if we get to, we can hang out, whatever the case may be. But mm-hmm. yes. So, yeah, we could go grab smoothies or something. Yes, definitely. We're both in Brooklyn. Yes, let's do it. So thank you so much. Have a good day and good luck with um okay. your next thing. You yes, it. absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Oh, what, wait, what's the next thing? Is it alive? Like, how is it? Or it's, if you're in Ethel's Club, you, a workshop? Yeah, so Ethel's Club is pretty much like a Black-owned um, BIPOC-friendly wellness um, mm-hmm. organization. So they host like a lot of wellness events. And um, I'm, I'm just a part of their wellness series. Um, so yeah, you have to be a member. The membership is not very expensive. Well, I don't know. I've seen it. I've seen it. Okay, so but, mm-hmm. and then at 7 p.m. today, at 7 p.m. today, I'll be on Twitter Spaces. So Twitter is launching a new um, feature that's just like Clubhouse. Mm-hmm, I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, you saw it? No, I saw like, I've seen, I follow one of the guys. I think his name's over the M. I'm not sure, but I see it in my up on the thing sometimes. People yeah, it's like purple. Talking. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I'll, I'll be there. Seven. Okay. Yeah, seven p.m. Yeah. I'm yeah. Hop in. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yes, thanks, Boo. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too. Yes, okay. Bye.